I've heard people ask before, why won't Satan get saved? I don't believe it is possible for Satan to believe the gospel and be saved. But even if he could get saved, here are some reasons why I believe he wouldn't get saved. A smart preacher said one time, if you mess with the book, God messes with your mind. Satan is notorious for changing what God says and going against the word of God. Satan is said to be wiser than Daniel in Ezekiel 28. He has probably set through more sermons than anyone other than God himself. He knows more than any Bible scholar who ever lived, all of them put together. But yet he rebelled against God and continues to rebel against God. So the first reason I believe Satan wouldn't get saved is because he went against the word of God. Sometime way back when, Satan was the anointed cherub, as it calls him in Ezekiel 28:14. If you look at Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17, it describes Satan. It says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Satan was at one time a sinless being that sat in the presence of God. He chose to rebel against what God said, and God messed with his mind. It is no different than today how saved men will change the words of the King James Bible, and God messes with their mind. Pharaoh refused to let the people go, and God hardened his heart. Proverbs 29.1 says, He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed in that without remedy. The more you go against God, the harder your heart will get. The more a lost man rejects the gospel, the harder he will get. And even the more a Christian stays in unconfessed sin, the worse off he will get. As bad as Satan was in Genesis 3, I imagine his heart to be even more black and nasty today. His heart will continue to get harder and harder. Have you ever thought about this? What if Satan decided, I'm not going to go against God anymore. I'm not going to accuse the brethren anymore. I'm not going to fill people's heart anymore with evil. I'm going to start working for God. The world would be a lot different because the Bible calls him the God of this world. But this won't happen because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. And it won't happen because Satan's heart is hard. Pharaoh is a type of the devil. The Bible calls him a great dragon. Just like it calls Satan a great dragon. Pharaoh's heart was hard. Satan's heart is hard. He rebelled against the words of God when he wanted to be like the Most High. And then he changed the words of God when he spake to Eve in Genesis 3. And also when he tempted Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. So Satan messed with the words of God, and when you mess with the words of God, God will mess with your mind. So the first reason I believe Satan wouldn't get saved is because he rebelled against God, he changed the words of God, and when you do this, God messes with your mind. He kept, he kept going against God over and over, and as... as time went on his heart got harder and harder but the second reason i believe satan wouldn't get saved even if he 
or he would get wouldn't get saved even if he could is because he isn't little in his own sight Ezekiel 28:17 says thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness I will cast thee to the ground I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee Satan was proud of his beauty he is proud that he is considered the second most powerful being. He doesn't give God any glory. Look at what the Bible says about King Saul. Describing his character before he was king. It says in 1 Samuel 15, 17. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. So Saul was little in his own sight. But when he became king, he got a big head. So not only is Satan's mind messed up because he messed with the words of God, and it is also messed up because he has a big ego. Thinking you're something when you're nothing deceives yourself. Satan may have a lot of power compared to us, but what is he to God? Compared to God, he is nothing. He's nothing for us to mess with. But God could kill him at any moment if he felt like it. Many people won't get saved because they have a lot of pride. They think they could get to heaven by their own righteousness. They are too proud to come to God as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel to take away their sins. Repentance is turning from your own righteousness and putting your trust in the gospel to save you. The Apostle Paul describes in the book of Philippians how he counted all things, all he counts all his good deeds he did before salvation as loss. And he said he counts them but done. Our self-righteousness can't get us to heaven. You need to swallow your pride and believe the gospel. Satan wouldn't get saved because he won't swallow his pride. Goliath is another example of someone who got the big head. He said, I defy the armies of Israel. In 1 Samuel 17.10, it says he presented himself 40 days. He had so much confidence that he believed he could take out everyone by himself. He wasn't little in his own sight. He was lifted up in pride. And Proverbs 16.18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty, and, and haughty spirit before a fall. 1 Samuel 17.4 says, Goliath's head was six cubits and a span. Six cubits and a span. And then 1 Samuel 17.7 7 says, His spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Then notice how he had six pieces of armor. He had a helmet of brass, a coat of mail, three and four greaves of brass, one for each leg, a target of brass between his shoulders, a spear with a brass head. So he had six pieces of armor. Goliath had confidence in his own armor. Satan had confidence and pride in the things he had on his body. So Goliath with six cubits and a span was his height. His spear's head weighed 600 shekels, and then he had six pieces of armor. So he's connected with the number 666, just like it is connected with Satan and the Antichrist. David put a rock to Goliath's head. So Goliath gets a head wound, just like the Antichrist is said to get one in Revelation 13 and Zechariah 11:17. Goliath's strengths literally went to his head and that's how he died was with a head wound and then David cut off his head with his own sword so Goliath's strengths went through his head just like Satan Satan messed with the book God messed with his mind he got the big head he has a lot of pride and the number three reason I believe he wouldn't get saved even if he could is because Satan loves religion did you know many people don't come to Jesus Christ because they are caught up in dead religion? Satan loves religion so much because he gets worship indirectly when people worship Mary, Buddha, or any other false god. 
The Bible talks something about false religion in Second Chronicles 11.15. It says, And he ordained him priests for the high places, and for the devils, and for the calves which he had made. Religious people will have places of worship, like the high places. They will ordain priests, and they will have idols that they worship, like calves or any little statues. But also notice the verse said, for the devils. When you worship statues, it is devils getting worship. Devils can connect themselves to objects. Many Catholics and people in these false cults will let these false religions keep them from coming to the true gospel when they have it presented to them by somebody that's saved. This is the main reason Satan loves Catholicism. Satan even loves for you to wear special clothing and robes. If you look at 2 Kings 10.22, it says, And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. So he likes for people to look the part. These people appear holy and righteous to men, but inside they are full of dead men's bones. Luke 20.46 talks about men who desire to walk in long robes. And Catholics will wear purple and scarlet robes. This is what the great whore is clothed in. In Revelation chapter 17. It says in Revelation 17, 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. She is obviously the Roman Catholic Church. She is also drunken with the blood of the saints, as it says in Revelation 17, 6. Catholics used to murder Christians. They were drunken with the blood of the saints, and they will be again in the future. It is a wicked religion. In the time of Jacob's trouble, God's people will be sacrificed and eaten by the Antichrist and the workers of iniquity. Micah 3.3 3 talks about this. When men chop up God's people in pieces for the pot and the cauldron. And they are already being prepared for this when they participate in the mass. Where they pretend to literally eat Jesus Christ's flesh. And literally drink his blood. Satan likes human sacrifices for his religion. In the Old Testament you can read about men who made their son or daughter to pass through the fire. And this had to do with them sacrificing their children to false gods. God forbid this in Deuteronomy 18.10. And Jesus Christ doesn't demand we sacrifice our children. Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for us. Religion keeps men from coming to the true gospel. Paul lets us know in verses like Romans 4, 5, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and Titus 3, 5 that we aren't saved by our works. Religion, on the other hand, is all about works. Even if it were possible for Satan to get saved, he would be too full of his own self-righteousness to ever swallow his pride and let Jesus Christ pay his sin debt. This is the problem for many people today and their false religion. And Satan hates the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ proclaimed by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. He hates the cross, the place where Jesus was crucified. The Bible refers to it as the place of a skull. And that's significant because this pictures how Jesus Christ will crush Satan's head at the second advent. The cross was stabbed into the place of a skull. So you got the cross going into a skull. And the prophecy goes all the way back to Genesis 3.15. It says, And I will put enmity between the, thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. When we come back with Jesus Christ, that's when this is going to happen. Romans 16.20 says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of Lord, Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So you see it hasn't happened yet. It says. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. It's not happened yet. So Satan let his beauty and strength get to his head. But his head will be bruised under your feet. As Paul says. There are pictures of this throughout the Bible. In Judges chapter 4. 
Jael ta uh, stabbed Sisera in the temple with the nail of a tent. And Sisera is a type of the Antichrist who gets a head wound. Jael is a woman and she is a good picture of the bride of Christ who comes back with Jesus Christ at the second coming. But Satan wouldn't get saved even if he could because he loves his religion. And number five, Satan wouldn't get saved because he hates God and wants rid of God. If you look at Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mat of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. He wants to be God so he can be the final authority. Did you know atheists and other God deniers and rejectors won't get saved because they want to be the final authority? They are all about preaching tolerance, yet they hate God and are intolerant of Christians. Romans 1 29 through 30 says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, malignity whispers, backbiters, haters of God. They don't want to get saved because they don't want to have somebody to answer to. But what they don't realize is they're going to have to answer for their sins one day anyway. Matthew 10, 26 says, Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. All those things they think that they've got covered and that nobody knows about, they're going to answer to God for those things at the great white throne judgment. And every Christ rejecter will bow down and acknowledge him as Lord. It says in Philippians 2.11, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. While Satan wants rid of God, he will be the one that, gets, that God gets rid of. If you look at Revelation 20.10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan wouldn't get saved because he has shown he cannot get satisfied with the things of God. And the Bible says about man in Proverbs 27.20, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. The same goes with Satan. Man wants more and more. Satan wanted more and more. And some men love their sin so much that they desire to get deeper and deeper into that sin. Satan was right next to God's throne. Seeing what we haven't seen. He saw God. He saw heaven. He saw angels. And he still rebelled. He had everything he could possibly want. But he wanted the throne. Even if it were possible for him to get saved. He wouldn't get saved for this reason. But unlike him, you have hope to be saved. You can be saved if you come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel. The gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Christ died for our sins. He was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you put your trust in that to take you to heaven then you can be saved quit relying on your own righteousness on your own righteous good deeds and good works that you do to save you it's not about how you live it's about who you're putting your trust in you have to put your trust in Jesus Christ when you put your trust in Jesus Christ he takes your sinful record nails it to the cross, and then gives you Jesus Christ's 
righteous record. Jesus Christ never sinned one time. So when you put your trust in him, you get his spotless, sinless record. And that's why you're able to go to heaven. He died for you. And he died by shedding his blood. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And you need him to be your savior because you're a sinner. As it says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then in Ephesians 2.8 and 9 it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not by works. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So if you want to be saved, quit trusting in your own righteousness. And rely on Jesus Christ. Put all your trust in Him. And you can be saved and have eternal life. You don't have to go to the same hell that the devil is going to go to. The Bible says hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. So you don't want to go there and be an outcast and an intruder in a place that wasn't even prepared for you to begin with. But believe the gospel. The gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4.